Guizhou's greatest appeal to me is the plurality of culture. 以高速公路、高速铁路为重要的载体的话，使得贵州能够融入到咱们整个经济体系当中去。I think Guizhou opening this national park is one of the few ways that they can really protect some of those areas. 我觉得贵州省会因为发的存在变成一个国际天文的一个交流中心。So now, Guizhou is using this experience that was for poverty alleviation, for rural revitalization, to other industries. It felt that Guizhou, much like Shenzhen, carried the sort of the model or the blueprint for the evolving stage. I think it's very enriching to experience Guizhou, and one should try to experience from as many angles as possible. Guizhou is one of my favorite provinces because it's so beautiful, and the roads were terrible because it's beautiful mountains. When I drove around China in '94, Guizhou was one of the worst places for roads. But in 2019, my goodness, the roads, the highways, the tunnels, the beautiful bridges across these deep valleys, the infrastructure was as good as anywhere else in China. And as we drove over these deep valleys, I feel like I'm more in a plane than in a car. I could see down below the new villages and cities, nothing like 30 years ago. Now, just like other places in China, the government's helped them rebuild new homes. And in the poorest places, they have concrete roads right to village doorsteps. I could see them. 30 years ago, I think it was one of the more places that seemed to have no hope, really. And today, I think it has uh, a bright future. In Guizhou, I appreciate that it's so poor that you know it's very difficult to lift these people from poverty, and it would be very tempting to just industrialize the place and change everything and destroy the environment, which many countries have done. Uh, but instead, in Guizhou, they're trying to make it sustainable and long term. For example, reforestation. Our Fujian province is number one in reforestation. I think it's 67 percent, but Guizhou is number one in forestation growth in an eight-year period. And they're using this to not only protect the environment, but also improve people's livelihood. Like the Guizhou people, the poor people in the poor areas, they pay them to plant and protect the trees. So they're protecting the environment, they're improving people's livelihood. And then people across China, business people, companies, private people, can pay to help offset their carbon. So it's very uh, holistic and they're thinking, protecting the environment, the environment first, because if they destroy the environment, they have no future. And, and, uh, and that's, a, that's a big problem around the world. They're starting to slowly recognize this, but China very early started this uh, ecological migration because the environment was destroying, people couldn't live. And the West criticized China for this so-called ecological migration because they said, you're destroying people's culture, and livelihoods, and all this. And China said, yeah, but if it would destroy the environment, they have nothing to live. If they die, they're not going to have much culture left. And now the West is finally seeing that what China is doing, especially in Guizhou, which is the biggest project, the West is seeing that the rest of the world also needs to do this. I think the United Nations said by 2050, there will be 100 million uh, climate refugees, 100 million. But China's going a step further. The West does climate migration, which is focused on the environment. But China's sticking with the ecological, which is balancing, protecting the environment, but at the same time protecting people's livelihoods and even improving it. So Guizhou is a great lesson for the rest of China. But also it's a great lesson for the rest of the world. The world's learning that slowly. <laughs> I think Guizhou opening this national park is one of the few ways that they can really protect some of those areas. They have, in the U.S., a lot of parks. They're tourist attractions, but that's not the purpose. The, the purpose is to protect the areas, to protect the nature, protect the land. But by allowing tourists, it, and this is what China does as well, by allowing tourists, it allows the tourists to learn about nature which most of them live in cities, don't know anything about it. And they learn about the challenges of protecting the land. 
that's educational for them. And they also learn of ways they can get involved in protecting this. So the purpose is protection, but tourism is very, educational tourism is very important. One of the things I love about Chinese is they love to volunteer. Uh, when I represented about a dozen cities in international competitions and in, in, in other countries, almost every time the leaders in other countries had asked me, how do they get the Chinese to volunteer so much? Do they make them volunteer? I said, if they made them volunteer, they wouldn't be volunteers. <laughs> but the Chinese love to volunteer and they like to feel a part of these things and be, and be involved. So I think that uh, in Guizhou they need to uh, make it educational. And this makes it sustainable because then they will also influence young people. There are a lot of papers now written around the world about China's ecological programs, but also quite a few papers I've seen about Guizhou and scientists and some of them saying, will this work? You know, <laughs> with the mother saying, is there a choice? Is there a choice? You have to try it. So I think China and especially Guizhou is a pioneer. It's doing things that others question, others doubt, but given the global warming and all the problems we're facing now, I think the world is finally seeing. We have to take responsibility. So if they can succeed in Guizhou, I think that gives a lot of hope to the rest of China and the world.